a game. Pressure and a sack. Rodgers gets pounded. Aaron Rodgers got pounded so hard that there was an L on his hand at the end of the game after throwing a game losing interception. And he's probably wondering right here who he will blame for losing to the Bills on Monday Night Football, who he could get fired, who he could get cut, who he could blame. The answer to that question was Mike Williams. He blamed Mike Williams for that interception. And now the Jets just traded for Devontae Adams, sent a fourth round conditional pick, and have reunited Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Bye bye, Mike Williams. You could also say the kickers who missed a total of four kicks in this game cost the Jets or the Bills the game. Or you could say the refs who made some terrible calls, like roughing the passer on Aaron Rodgers, who Post game, I will say, did call out the refs in his post game press conference and will be taking on a fine for the rest of us. That yeah, seemed a little ridiculous, including the roughing the passer on me. That's not roughing the passer. And just a reminder Aaron Rodgers will be fined for criticizing the refs. Meanwhile, the refs will never be fined for costing teams the game. Passes income. These are the best and worst moments, the biggest winners and the biggest losers from week 6 of the NFL. And trust me, Aaron Rodgers is not the only one who got pounded this week. Rodgers gets pounded! The Saints led up 50 points to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I also don't know who's on a better generational run, Will Levis or Chauncey Garner Johnson. Jerry Jones' birthday went very well, got smoked by the Detroit Lions. We also had a coach go into the medical tent pre-game. And we also had offensive linemen playing wide receiver and doing trick plays in the fourth quarter for the Lions. Lots to go over for this week. Let's take a look at the biggest winners and losers. I'm excited to be partnering up with Game Time. Game Time is the best place to get tickets, especially last minute. And with the NFL season officially here, make sure you guys check them out. Download the Game Time app and you'll see how easy it is and how cheap their tickets are. And their Game Time picks makes it easy to find cheap tickets. If you find a lower price on another website for that specific seat, they'll cover 110% of the difference. They also have photos of each seat, so that way you know what the view is going to look like from where you're sitting. Just download the Game Time app and use my promo code TRUEFAN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. What time is it? It's game time. And if you want to help support me and the channel in any other ways, you can just click my link tree down in the description. There's lots of options for you there as well. All right, thanks for tuning in. Let's get back to the video. Week six got off to a rough start for the Seattle Seahawks. But I will say the uniform combinations and aesthetic between the Niners and Seahawks right here was just beautiful. We need more uniform combinations like this. But this game was so rough for the Seahawks that our losing moment for the losing team in the Seattle Seahawks, we had a player throwing up on the sideline after watching their team play football. And I'm sure a lot of Seahawks fans felt the exact same way. It wasn't their best performance against a division rival who was missing their starting running back, their second string running back. The Seattle Seahawks started off 3-0 and now within the span of like two weeks, they are now 3-3. Three and three. I will say though, our winningest player for the 49ers, Nick Bosa, who activated his inner racism, which gave him superpowers on Thursday, racking up 14 pressures against Geno Smith. I believe that's tied for one of the highest ever in an NFL game. And after dealing with Nick Bosa all game long, Geno Smith started to smash his head against the screen in hopes of getting CTE so he didn't have to play against Nick Bosa anymore. And now the NFL world this upcoming Thursday will feel the exact same way watching the Saints play the Broncos on Thursday Night Football. NFL fans are the next losers because they're about to watch the battle of the mids. Broncos, Saints. A game expected to be so bad that on the promotional graphic, they put Sean Payton and Cam Jordan. They put a head coach and a washed player. Now I get that they're trying to promote that Sean Payton's returning back to the Saints, but why not just put like good players on the graphic and make people want to watch? The graphic, this graphic is just straight up sad, but not as sad as the performance the Saints defense put up on Sunday. The Saints defense is a loser while the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense is a winner. 
The Tampa Bay Buccaneers vs. the Saints defense put up 51 points, 594 yards, 31 first downs, that's more first downs than the Saints had total points, averaged 8.2 yards of play, and also forced a billion missed tackles. This loss was so bad that the Saints became the first team since the 1950 Baltimore Colts to intercept three passes, score 27 points, and lose a game by 24 or more points. Good job, Saints. So while the Buccaneers are the winners, Spencer Rattler is a loser. Not because he played poorly, I actually think he played pretty well. I actually think he's a loser because of the situation he was dealt with. First NFL start, no starting receiver, preseason offensive line, and a defense that let up 600 yards and 51 points. And it's only going to get worse on Thursday Night Football because the Saints have even more injuries. How lovely is that? And similar to Spencer Rattler, another rookie in Drake May made his first start for the New England Patriots. He is a loser, not because he played bad. Drake May actually played quite well. He's just a loser for being in a worse situation than Spencer Rattler. Rattler's playing with backups. Drake May's starting supporting cast would be Spencer Rattler's backups. Drake May's a loser for his situation, but he's a winner for showcasing a ton of potential and throwing more touchdowns in one game than Jacoby Brissett has all season. If Drake May can get some help around him and not get sacked six times in his first NFL start, he definitely has the potential to be a franchise quarterback. The Texans have a good defense. He looked good out there. Meanwhile, we had a winning performance by the number one overall pick, Caleb Williams, who took Spencer Rattler's job at Oklahoma. Although I'm a little questionable how Caleb Williams showed up to the game dressed like a cartoon character. I don't know where this cartoon character is from, but the similarities are there. Williams had himself a really nice day throwing four touchdowns and 200 yards. The dude is getting better every single week and ever since CJ Stroud tried to give him advice and he looked pissed off. He has not looked back and the Bears might have themselves a franchise quarterback. It doesn't matter that all the teams they've beaten have a combined win total of four. Although there might still be some weird plays going on, we had Caleb Williams throw a pass, which is offensive lineman's helmet batted down. That's the best way I can explain it. Meanwhile, on the other side, the Jacksonville Jaguars are the losing team and possibly the losing organization. They had multiple drops. I mean multiple, like four touchdowns worthy of drops. They have an overpaid quarterback named Prince Charming and a really bad head coach. Luckily for them, another week in London should do it, right? And on top of all of this nonsense going on for the Jaguars, we have a player actually trying to be a Jaguar, getting on all fours and crawling towards the quarterback. This seems like a good time for our WTF is happening moments of the week. This is where we just pull up random moments. We don't know what's happening and maybe taken out of context because what is actually going on? How about Joe Burrow celebrating as if he just won the Bengals a playoff game on the last play of the game when in reality they beat the Bengals like 10 to 7. It was horrendous. It was absolutely horrendous. And it wasn't because the Bengals played well. They're playing Daniel Jones and the Giants who missed multiple reads, threw up a quadruple coverage interception. The Giants are just bad and Joe Burrow celebrating as if he just won the playoff game. How about Chargers head coach Jim or John Harbaugh? I don't know who's who. Pre-game going into the medical tent for I don't know exactly what it is. He called it a arterial flutter 2-0 in Arithemias. No idea what that is, hopefully it gets figured out, but when was the last time that you saw a coach get checked out in the medical tent? He was also questionable to return. <laughs> he did return and the Chargers would end up beating the Denver Broncos in a game where the Broncos just didn't really do too much good. And since we're on the topic of coaches, the Eagles are now 1-0 since Nick Sirianni shaved his head. And at the end of the game, after beating the 1-4, 1-5 Cleveland Browns, he celebrated his win by yelling and trash-talking Eagle fans instead of celebrating with his team. Way to go, Nick Sirianni. And on the other side, you had the Cleveland Browns who the Eagles beat. 
And Deshaun Watson on his last like 26 third downs is 0 for 26. I'm pretty sure that's the same number of women he... I'm not going to go there. I don't need to. You can finish the joke yourself. And while Deshaun Watson is playing horribly, you got his backup Jameis Winston doing this at practice, probably knowing that his time must be coming up soon. He's probably going to get a starting opportunity, hopefully at some point in this season. This seems like a good way to end the WTF is happening moments of the week. Back to the winners and losers. Why don't we go to Jerry's World in Dallas, where they're probably one of the biggest losers of the week getting smoked like 47 to 6, 47 to 9. I don't know, but what a way to celebrate his birthday with a birthday beatdown. I'm surprised he didn't have a heart attack. This was a game that the Cowboys got beat so bad that they blurred out the scoreboard when showing their attendance. The Lions social media team even pointed it out. You know how bad something has to go for you to blur out <laughs> the scoreboard? You also had the Lions at the end of the game literally playing with their food. Like real freaking Lions. They had offensive linemen playing receiver. They were throwing fade passes to receivers. They ran a hook and ladder with an offensive lineman. With other offensive linemen out there blocking for him. They were just out there trying new shit to see what works and doesn't work. In post game, Amonra St. Brown got a DM which he shared to the whole NFL world from Jordan Lewis calling him a bitch. You... <laughs> You got beat 47 to 9, and the first thing you do is DM the other team's player to let him know he's a bitch. Watch some film, man. We even got Cowboy fans throwing up. It wasn't just the Seahawks. Meanwhile, the stadium for the Cowboys makes their players freaking blind and impossible to throw, catch, run the football. Great stadium design for whoever designed this shithole. And despite all of this, this is not the losing stadium of the week. The Raiders stadium was the losing stadium because they let the Steeler fans take over their stadium. Which makes sense. The Raiders suck and even Max Crosby knows it after pushing and shoving his coach out of the way. And we do have a losing and a winning trek play and coincidentally they're the last two teams he talked about. The Steelers and the Lions ran the exact same play with two very different results. The Steelers resulted, I believe, in a fumble recovered by the offense, and the Lions resulted in a touchdown. The exact same play. We also have a loser in Justin Fields because despite being 4-2, Mike Tomlin today said they're going to let Russell Wilson, now that he's fully healthy, take first team reps and they'll consider starting him on Sunday. The, the Steelers are 4-2 and, and you're making a quarterback change? We do have a winning quarterback though, and that is Bryce Young, who after the Panthers got different results after benching him and putting in Andy Dalton, have started to suck once again. And the reason he's a winner is because this is the face of someone who knows he may not be the problem even though he sucked, but there may be bigger issues in Carolina. And you also had Mark Sanchez saying it's a good thing Bryce Young got benched to learn from Andy Dalton. And as he's saying this, Andy Dalton throws a pick. Well, I think he's learning along the way. I, I think he needs to watch how a true professional... Oh, intercepted! And we saved the best for last. Because I don't know, I don't, I don't know who, who's having a better generational run. Will Levis or Chauncey Garner-Johnson? Will Levis went insane this week touchdown no more gun celebrations so he started shooting out spider webs like he's the freaking who, who's the worst spider-man like he's um like he's toby mcguire he he's he's my least favorite of all the spider-men like he's toby mcguire he also torpedoed himself into an old bald boy on the sideline basically tore that dude's achilles and had to be taken off the field in a leg wrap all while celebrating the first down. Will Levis, everyone, missed the week, came off the bye week, and gave us the best that he had. We even had a teammate doing his best Will Levis impersonation, Legereus Sneed. Shout out to him for showing um, respect to Will Levis. We also had Chauncey Garner Johnson stand still while a guy runs right by him. And also we had him, I don't even know what's going on here. Looks like he just crashes into his own teammate. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson versus Will Levis. Who's on a better generational run of um, 
making their team lose. That's it for winners and losers, but we have a few more things to look over. The best throws of the week. Aaron Rodgers to Alan Lazard. This was a ridiculous throw. Coincidentally, Jordan Love of the Green Bay Packers, who's filling in for the Aaron Rodgers who they traded, made this insane throw. And our stat of the day. Usually this is like, oh wow, this is a great stat. No, th this one's like crazy bad. It has now been 1,030 days since Aaron Rodgers has thrown a 300 yard game. And coincidentally, Aaron Rodgers also has our coolest moment of the week, completing yet another Hail Mary, which had Patrick Mahomes in disbelief. How does Aaron Rodgers freaking do it? How He's got to be like the most completed touchdowns on Hail Marys in NFL history. That does it for our week six winners and losers. Let me know how your team did. If I didn't mention your team, oh, Ravens and Commanders. I didn't know much about the game. Just seems like a whole bunch of penalties and big hits. Good game though. Jared Kennedy went off. But if I didn't mention your team, then they need to either do something better or something significantly worse and hilarious. So subscribe to my channel, Cash Sports, for more daily NFL content, up-to-date news, and all that good stuff. Have a good one. Peace.